Coming up on Hands on Mac, it's time to talk about pass keys and show you how easy it is to set up a pass key on your Mac. Stay tuned. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Listeners of this program get an ad-free version if they're members of Club Twit. $7 a month gives you ad-free versions of all of our shows, plus membership in the Club Twit Discord, a great clubhouse for Twit listeners. And finally, the Twit Plus feed with shows like Stacy's Book Club, The Untitled Linux Show, The Giz Fizz, and more. Go to twit.tv slash club twit. And thanks for your support. Back to Hands On Mac. I am Micah Sargent, and today we are going passwordless, people. Uh, now that the next version of Mac OS is here, it's time to take a look at how easy it is to create pass keys on the Mac. Now, it's important to understand that pass keys are a relatively new technology in terms of adoption. There haven't been a whole lot of places that have enabled this new means of gaining access to your accounts. So because of that, it's kind of hard to find places to set up pass keys to log in. Uh, luckily, I have a way to kind of understand the current um, set of, of, of sites and services that do offer pass keys. And we are going to look at what it looks like to set up a pass key on your Mac. So let's head over to Mac OS and take a look. All right, here we are in Mac OS and you can see I've got my Safari browser open and I am at the website passkeys.directory. This uh, page, which is created by one password, has a list of the different places that currently support pass keys and tells you how they the pass keys are supported, what you need to do uh, to be able to use pass keys on those sites and everything in between. So what we're going to do today is take a look at Gmail or Google uh, as the means of log into a an account. So what we can do is uh, right click on this link here g.co slash passkeys and we'll copy that link and then we'll head over to this other tab and hit enter. Um, I have gone ahead and created a Gmail account, uh, Micah twit at gmail.com for the sake of doing this and watch how simple this is going to be. Now before we go forward there's something important that you need to do. Uh, let's head up into the Safari menu uh, in the menu bar, and we're going to go into settings, and then we're going to go over to the autofill page. On the autofill tab, we want to make sure that usernames and passwords are selected underneath the autofill web forms section. Then we want to go into the passwords page, which I'm going to use my finger to authenticate, to gain access to this page. And then I want to go into password options. And I want to make sure that autofill passwords and pass keys is turned on. Use passwords and pass keys from iCloud Keychain is turned on. And then we can choose done and toggle that uh, to, to that setting. Now, once I have both of those turned on, that means that Safari can actually accept the process to create pass keys and uh, to use pass keys to gain access to or to uh, provide authorization for an account. So now that I'm on this page, I will click on create a pass key. Here it gives me information about creating a passkey for the Google account. It says passkeys are easy to set up and let you securely sign into your Google account using your fingerprint, your face, screen lock, or hardware security key. You can create a passkey on this device or use another device. If I choose use another device, it will create a QR code that I could then scan from an iPhone or an Android device and use that as my passkey. What I want to do is use this Mac with its fingerprint sensor, the Touch ID sensor, as the means of of creating the passkey. So I will click continue and then up will pop a prompt from Apple saying use touch ID to sign in. I will tap my finger and now this process is done. The passkey has been created. Uh, it says now you can now use your fingerprint, your face, your screen lock or hardware security key to verify it's really you signing on. I'll choose done. And now I can see that in iCloud Keychain, I have added a passkey. I could create more pass keys if I wanted to from other devices. Uh, I can edit this pass key by changing the name of it, essentially, or I can remove this pass key. I'm going to go back. And now what I want to do 
is check the verification options that I have here, including the ability to skip password when possible. That will let me log in without using my passkey. So the next step is to sign out of micatwit at gmail.com. And then we're going to click. Actually, what we'll do is we'll go to accounts.google.com to kind of restart it. And then I'm going to click on this and you will see that, yes, there's a passkey that I can use to confirm that it's me. So I'm going to choose continue. Up will pop the option. I'll take my finger. I'll press that down. And now suddenly I don't have a password I have to worry about for this account. Now I can just use my finger to log into this. And what does that mean? It means that if this were somehow breached, the password is not something that I have to worry about getting uh, taken and used because I would need my finger to be able to access my account uh, if I'm using that pass key in place of the password. Now, as it stands, you're going to see pass keys being used as a means of second factor, two factor authentication or multi factor authentication, where it serves as more proof that it is you. And uh, oftentimes this will be for accounts where you've already set up a password and you'll be adding pass key support for the convenience of logging in with a pass key. But in the future, the idea here is that when we create an account for the first time, we use a pass key to create that account. And so there's no password in the first place. That means that without a password, there's not that thing that can get lost uh, or breached and used to gain access to our account because they would need to have that specific cryptographic uh, tie to my uh, specific uh, face or finger or something similar. So in theory, it is a far more secure while also convenient way of accessing an account and proving that you're you. But as it stands, because we're in this kind of between state, that is why you're going to see uh, pass keys often being used as an additional factor. So that is how you set up a passkey in Safari. Again, passkeys.directory is the website that you can use to see what sites and services support passkeys. Um, as you'll notice, there really aren't a lot. I can scroll to the bottom of the list pretty quickly here, uh, but these do support it. So if you do use any of these services, you can definitely check it out. Um, and, you know, I am eager to see this continue to come to more services. Uh, this, of course, is able. You can do this on an iPhone as well. Um, if you have iCloud uh, passwords turned on, then it will simply work the same way. Um, in the case of, of this, obviously, you would need to use the device that you have um, currently with your passkey, so the Mac, to log in. You'd want to add your iPhone as another means of uh, logging in with a passkey so that you can use your phone to gain access to your Gmail account and YouTube account, etc. Uh, folks, thank you for tuning in to yet another episode of Hands On Mac. I, I think this is super exciting stuff, and I'm really excited to get to show you how easy it is to set up a passkey. Fingers crossed we see more sites and services adding passkey support. Um, I'll be keeping my eye out for that. Uh, if you have questions, comments, concerns, etc., send those to micah at twit.tv. Uh, again, thank you so much for supporting uh, Club Twit, and thank you for letting me bring you this show every week where I love to give you all sorts of Apple tips and tricks um, and everything that you need to know about using a Mac, an iPhone, etc. Uh, I will see you next week for another episode of Hands on Mac. Goodbye. <laughs>